hello viewers on youtube in this video i am bringing back the old washing machine to life but in a different way before it was just a normal motor like this okay we did the video like this before so this one is similar to this one you can see the housing the same shape okay so the wires for this motor were overheated but it had the same wire very thick like these ones same type of wire copper wire this not aluminum okay you can see even the rotor is the same to this one see that but the outside winding for this was overheated so the size of a wire was one millimeter similar to the one I just show you. That's why the time I was rewinding this, I used two wires. Okay, because I don't have right now one millimeter wire. So I used these 0 0.5 mm wires, two of them. Okay, so one side here, it had... 250 in the other side 250 okay i did the same thing but the difference is that this time i'm using two wires or double wires but the number of turns is the same 250 this side 250 this side and this time like i said we're not going to make it as a motor no so instead of this rotor i made this rotor right here this one it has magnets and not just magnets very strong magnets neodymium magnets okay so this side is producing north pole and the other side is producing south pole you have four line of magnet one two three four same thing to the other side four and going down we have three so it's uh, four by three same here four by three not no, not south okay so here you can see i connected all of these wires in series remember i'm using two wires in each and every winding why then I connected them all in series instead of just use them as a double like that? Well, I have to explain that. Sometimes, remember we're making this as a generator. So sometimes maybe we don't have some big stuff to power and maybe the device we're using to rotate here, it's, uh, it has low RPM. Then if you follow, the procedure I use here using two wires, you can connect this side in series and this side in series so that you can have low RPM and produce high voltage. But if you have a fast motor or a motor which is fast to spin the this rotor at the middle, then you can connect them like how they're supposed to be two and two just connect this and this one in series okay i know you're lost but right now you're going to get and understand what am i saying very soon okay so it was like this the housing before but just this one is a bigger vision this one is a small you can see right here very small even here right but anyway 250 250 Let's put this side right now. I'm gonna take some few minutes to put the rotor at the middle, then we'll continue from there. Now it's all done, it's together now. All right, here you can spin it nicely. All right, so back. In explaining this 
all of these are connected in series our multimeter let's put it here in 250 volts ac after connecting in series we have this wire as an output and we have this wire as an output okay now see that with hand rotation we're making about 23 22 volts depends how fast they spin it with hand rotation right i hope you can see that Ooh, very hard because yeah there we go hmm. 49 okay one time let me use the rope to spin it don't know how fast it can go and let's see how much voltage we can make with the rope rotation after connecting all of them in series right this is enough first test ready just in case if there is uh, some error somewhere else to avoid shock check out the voltage oh there we go <laughs> see how something okay so it's a bearing it came out right here so don't worry we'll just push it back inside just like this yeah there it's done but to make sure it's strong uh, let me use super glue so we're not going to have the same problem again okay i added glue here super glue i hope it's holding now so let's do it one more time with the rope done this here. okay let's see if it's not going to come out again if this is enough sure this is not touching the body just in case of shock ready 184 this time okay so i believe that once you spin this with a motor which is fast enough you can reach well going to 300 300 something okay so thus this coil is connected in series itself and this one connected in series itself then after both series are also connected in series now from this side and this side but now let me show you this all right now here i hope i make it easy for everyone we have two windings here this winding each and every winding we're using two wires and we have 250 turns in each and every windings and we're using two wires so this winding right here with the 250 turns the wires are just working as these two wires are just working as one this is a starting point this is the ending point okay another winding this side it has 250 turns we're using double wires similar to this but these ones are connected in series you can see here those two wires they are connected in series there is a different when they're connected in series like this that means with a single hand rotation you'll get higher voltage but but oh, it's going to be low watts the watts are going to be low okay high voltage low watts the only important of this is that you don't need 
super high speed to produce 220 volts. You will only need a low RPM motor or whatever thing you're using to spin this to get 220 volts. While this one, because the wires, they are double, here you are going to get, remember here, we are getting 10 or 11 to 12 volts when it's connected in series. High voltage, low watts. Then when we connect these ones, this winding, because it's not connected in series, just two wires working as one. Check out the voltage we, we're getting from here. So about four, five volts. Okay. See that? So it's your choice. It depends what you are going to power. If you're going to power something big, then it's good to leave your wires double like this. But if you know that it's only for the light bulbs or maybe less than something less than 200 watts then you can connect them in a series like this side but if you're going to power something because this motor was 300 watts this one here it was 300 watts so i believe the watts we can produce here will be more than that 300 watts okay so if you have something over 300 watts then you have to leave your wires two like this but you will need something with high rpm to spin here so you can reach 220 volts i believe yeah you understand what i said now in this problem i'm going to connect them in series because i'm not going to power something big so let's put them back in series Okay, this one and this one coming together make one and this one and this one no nope. this and this coming together like that so I believe from here and this we should get 10 volts going upwards with hand rotation. Yep, we're fine. And when we take out from here to this one, now both windings connected in series by itself connected by in, uh, in series on its own then at the end we're taking this one and this one connect them back together in series all of them then now that's when we now we get the higher voltage but this higher voltage is less than 300 from 300 watts going down so i prefer this one because we're not going to power something very big so i'm going to pause the video just to connect all of this trying to be neat okay then we'll continue from there now i believe it looks better and neat this is the wire which is connecting this uh winding to this winding this is a jumper wire so here this is uh live and neutral okay double check all right it's live another red black neutral okay let's check it out yeah I believe we are fine there we go now this time let's see now if we can be able to power something with our voltage this is 55 watts okay it's a mouse sander let's see oh uh don't worry you're going to see live this brown blue 
the intro okay now let's see if we can power this 50 watts mouse sander no voltage coming from somewhere else here it's one of this our machine right you check the voltage in this one when you start moving that means it's on in case safety first in case some wires are touching this not hiding any wires using this in case there's a short circuit somewhere ready well 50 watts 55 watts is small for this so this moment connecting 300 watts the light bulbs let's see how much light we can get from this 300 watts Right. Uh, this one, no, no problem. Neutral there, and this one right here. Okay. Yeah, I can feel the resistance. Okay, that's 300 watts. Okay, so let's add something. Yeah, but if I add this one, you're not going to see anything. What else? Well, let's put back this and let's see if we can reach 350. Let's connect it. Like this. Right now we have 355, three light bulbs in this machine. I'm worried. I don't know if it's not going to cause short circuit, but I believe it will be fine. Let's see this time if we can be able to power all of this. And this might be the last time. I don't want to hit my hand, but yeah. Ready? Okay, so I would like to stop right here. Thanks for watching. Please, if you're new, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, you can write in the comment section if you need me to spin this in a full speed using a DC motor right here. So we can do that in the next video. But for now, I believe that's enough. So see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.